One of the things that my students really like learning about is what should you do with your hands. So I've said be in neutral stance unless you want to do something deliberate. But there are some, um, some hand gestures that I would like to share with you which will give you special things you can do with your hands depending on the intention. Now these come from um, some observations that were made by a family therapist by the name of Virginia Satia. And Virginia Satia, when she looked at um, her clients, she realized that there were particular stances and postures that they went into from time to time, which caused a deliberate emotional response in the audience. So these, hand, these gestures and stances that I'm about to share with you will invoke a moment to moment response in your audience that will get an, uh, which will cause them to ha feel emotions based just on how your body's standing. For instance, if I, if I look at you like this, you're going to feel a little different to if I look at you like this, right? So let's have a look at what these five categories are and see if you can start to employ them inside of your presentations. So the first one I want to share with you is called the blamer. Now the blamer stance is going to elicit a, um, elicit a response in the audience where they feel like they're being told off or blamed. They're going, to, they're going to retract. And let me show you what the position is and then you'll see why. The traditional position, you're going to have the left hand on, the, on, on your hip, you've got your right finger extended and you're stepping forward and pointing at someone. This is traditional blamer, right? This is a blamer pose. You can imagine if you were on stage saying, you better listen to me because what I'm going to tell you is going to make you a lot of money. <laughs> then you can see the emotional response that you get in the audience. It's like, oh, okay, I'm going to listen. So that's the blamer posture and it elicits that kind of an emotional response. The next posture I'm going to share with you is called placator. Now the placator posture is quite an ingratiating posture and it's one that women shouldn't use too much, but let me show you what it is first. So traditional placator is right down on the floor begging and pleading with on one knee with one knee down. Right? So that's how you how your feet are. And then if you come up, the hands are um, the hands are facing up like this, pleading, right? This is the placator, traditionally speaking. Now it's not very often you're gonna get right down on all fours on the stage, but it can have a very powerful impact, especially in large arenas if you do. More often than not, you're going to be using the placator hands while you're standing up. So let's have a look at that. So placator in the standing position is just with your hands up like this and almost like with the facial gesture that goes with it as well. So you know, I'm begging you, you've got to do this. If you're not going to do it for me, do it for yourself. You guys get the idea? This is placator. Imagine how you, how do you feel when I say that? Come on, you've got to do this. You go, oh, oh she's begging with me, right? So you can use that as well, the placator. Hands, hands over like this, and you can see why I say for women, don't use it too much, because it's very, it weakens you, it weakens you. Instead, a really good one for women to replace this with is something called the leveler. Now the leveler is really simple, it's very symmetrical, and then when it comes to your hands, it's just, I'm gonna level with you, right? A very short, sharp, um, movement like this. It doesn't go out any wider than your hips. It's not like wee. <laughs> Instead, it's just very short and sharp just down here. So I'm giving it to you straight. You just have to master these tools. If you can master the way you stand on the platform, then you're going to do really, really well. So, right? so I'm leveling with you. It's very, um, the, the emotional response that you're going to elicit with that is, oh wow, this person's telling me the truth. There's, there's no rubbish here. This is straight down the line. You guys get the idea? So that's, play, uh, that's the leveler. The next, gestures that you, the next sort of gesture and posture that you can use is called the computer. Now the computer is an interesting one because the emotional response that it, that it initiates in your audience is that they will tend to go up in their head and really consider what it is you're talking about. Here's the computer, here's the computer pose, right? We've got one hand um, sitting underneath the elbow here like this and your right hand is on your chin. Hmm. Um, when, you, when you do this and you consider and you're thinking, you're thinking about things, people in the audience are going to go, they're going to go up into their head as well and, and consider it too. Let's consider this very, very carefully. What are the implications of everything we're talking about here? Can you imagine if you just added in a few simple things like this into your presentation, the sorts of results that you might see, right? So it's very, um, very heady. That's a really, I really like the computer when I get challenged from the audience. If someone's, you know, if someone's challenging me on something or, or saying that what, what I'm teaching is wrong or 
um, or that they don't agree with me, rather than kind of, you know, coming at them with the blame as they know you're wrong, instead I'll go, well, mm, let me consider that for a moment. And it kind of diffuses it because they see, that person then sees that I am actually considering it. Well, let me give it to you straight. Here's how I see it. Okay, do you see how some of these things can start to, um, can start to link together? So that's number four, is the computer. The last one that I wanna share with you, and this is, uh, this is, I guess, anything that doesn't fall into any of those categories is what we call the distractor. Now the distractor is the clown, it's the class clown, it's the person who moves around and it's asymmetrical and hands are everywhere, legs are everywhere, you're wiggling around, that's distractor. Now you might have seen people on stage who all they ever do is distractor and it's over the top and really big and crazy. It has its place, but then from time to time, you know, you really want to level with your audience and give it to them straight. Because if we really consider things, you know that they've just got to do this if they're going to really make a difference. And if they don't, well, I tell you, I'll make them. <laughs> so you see how they all link together? So we've got distractor all over the place. We've got our computer up here in our head, our leveler giving it to you straight. We've got placator who's just begging with you. And we've got the blamer who's really giving it to you forcefully. So use those five satire categories in your presentations and you're gonna add another whole dimension to what you're doing. Now just one last piece on these satire categories, don't get hung up on what they're called on the names of the poses. They've just got names so that we, I can teach them to you easily. The thing to remember is the emotional response you can elicit in your audience by using them. And make sure therefore that you use them a lot. Once you've finished your training and you're ready for the next step, make sure that you sign up for our free shift speaker training newsletter and get free access to your very own copy of the presentation profits blueprint absolutely free i've put together this blueprint to take everything that i know about how to create a successful speaking business and put it in one place inside the blueprint you're going to discover the seven p's for turning your passion into multiple streams of passive income using speaking and the elegant business model. The number one marketing myth that speakers have to ignore if they have even half a chance of succeeding in the industry. The it factor for speakers and how ignoring this means that your speaking career is destined for mediocrity and no one wants that. We'll discover new ways to build your community through video, email and blogging and how that can fast track your speaking success and give you more raving fans than you ever thought possible. We'll also show you why speaking is one of the laziest ways to wealth, provided you know how and where to leverage every scrap of effort that you make, as well as much, much more. So in order to download your very own copy of the blueprint, take yourself to www.shiftspeakertraining.com slash blueprint. Look for the sign up form right there on the website. Enter your first name and email address in the box and then click on the button that says get instant free access. You'll then get a copy of the blueprint emailed directly to you. You can open it up and in it you will find so much information on how to take your speaking business and make it extraordinary. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video training very soon.